the recording. All right. Just popping the agenda doc into the chat. Uh, please uh, uh, register yourself as attending. And if there's uh, anything you'd like to pop onto the agenda, uh, please do it. Um, also, it'd be good to do a little open tracing review for the first half. Uh, so I'll try to edit up the notes based on you know, what we're discussing. So feel free to add uh, notes and comments to that section as well. Ctuck v four q two plus cr. That's an interesting handle. All right. Okay, so let's kick it off. Uh, I suggested that it's sort of end of summer, fall is coming. Uh, it might be a good chance to do a sort of open tracing project review, uh, kind of where we think the project's at, uh, what, do you, what we think's improved, uh, what do we think uh, we could do better on, and where do we think we should be uh, focusing our, our time and energy for the project uh, coming forward in the fall. Uh, so, uh, kicking it off with good stuff, sort of like what's been going well, and I didn't go grab a bunch of metrics and make pretty graphs for this. Uh, so this is all anecdotal, uh, feelings about the project. If people do have data that is interesting. Um, but yeah, uh, what's been going well, uh, for my perception, there, there's a lot more open tracing users and awareness of the project and awareness of distributed tracing in general seems to be up uh, from where it was last year. Uh, I don't know if other people have a similar experience on that front, um, but that's been my experience from going to conferences and other events. Does anyone else have sort of comments on uh, open tracing uh, uh, user base or just distributed tracing in general and like where that's going? Definitely distributed tracing. So we gave an open tracing tutorial at Velocity this week. And uh, when I asked how many people use tracing, uh, half of the room raised hands. Uh, this is like the biggest I've ever seen. Uh, and, and there's like about, uh, I think 70 people in the room. Great. Yeah. yeah. We're first starting to see uh, people uh, ask us about integration with uh, different systems. So that's kind of cool uh, that, uh, that uh, where, where in the past it was, they didn't actually know too much about what we're doing. Yeah, it definitely seems to be, definitely seems to be a growing concept. Um, and I know when people come to use uh, LightStep as product, I'm told we get more people who have already integrated open tracing or some other tracing system uh, as opposed to just coming to it from scratch. Yeah, I, I would say one of the more surreal things uh, on, on this front that I've seen is uh, the new Relic earnings call, I think for Q3 or something, I don't remember, but like, you know, the founding CEO of New Relic is talking about distributed tracing on their earnings call, which is kind of bizarre to me. And it's like 10 years ago, it was literally unknown. Uh, and it still feels to me like it should be kind of an implementation detail, but it's become a marketing buzzword um, that is interesting to, you know, public, uh, institutional public investors. And that, that's the first for sure. Yeah. Um. 
one shift I feel I see is the move from tracing being, yeah, this sort of limited tool that did a lot of sampling and you were only using it to get certain kinds of like latency averages, like a very specific tool to this world where people just want all of their logs, they want all of their event data contextualized and their systems are distributed. So they have to propagate some context in order to contextualize their data. And so tracing via context propagation is becoming more and more central to just observability in general. Uh, that's, that's my impression of this shift from tracing being this sort of niche thing you did on the side to more and more something that's in the middle of your observability due to context propagation. I don't know if other people have an opinion on that. Something I'm really interested in is um, features and analysis that's on the tracing data. So currently Jaeger is primarily trace focused and uh, we have some dependency graphs and everything, but um, I think there's probably a wealth of exploration that we can do on trace data analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, during the Amadeus talk, the guy mentioned it would be interesting to have specs around the data structures, not just the collection, but maybe something that supports post analysis. Yeah. Um, so by the data structures here, uh, which, which data structures are, are you thinking about? Uh, well, I don't really know, but um, sort of like, I think right now open tracing is, seems to me, and I'm not familiar with it, but primarily focused on collection yeah. um, instrumentation. So if we were to also sort of facilitate and support structure around post analysis, so maybe trace transforms, that sort of thing, uh, like the common data model, et cetera. I mean, what, like open tracing tries to be sort of, let's say, agnostic to the implementation, but I do, I agree though that like all implementations will have the issue of what to do with or what is useful about traces, right? Yeah. So yeah, I think. I mean, if we can define interfaces and then people can write code against those interfaces, then it's mm -hmm. not uh, like installation specific. So yeah, I can work on light step data or Jaeger data or anything else. Yeah, that's a good idea. So, anyway. Yeah, I think, so the part of that, when it comes to analyzing this data, I think there's, there's like two parts. There's like you're propagating this context and you're doing all the analysis internal to the system that's sort of underneath the tracing API. Uh, so that's like one world where your tracing system is just hoovering in all of this data and doing some analysis somewhere somehow. But then there's another world where you're propagating context and that context is being propagated for the availability of other systems to do some analysis or have some access to it. And I feel like that's a place where we, by design, don't have an interface right now. Like we sort of do with baggage, right? Like you can set baggage in one place and get it somewhere else. And that's our context propagation method. But if you want to say, propagate something for the duration of a single process or even just setting a tag on a span and then using that tag later. Like right now we don't, oh, that's not like an explicit part of the open tracing interface. And people have written some middleware things on top of open tracing to do this stuff, but it's not like a thing we're waving our hands about. I'm wondering if that relates to the sort of data structure analysis you were talking about? Um, I don't know. It, it sounds like that might be like adaptive tracing, so to speak, or something along those lines, where you can respond to the trace data as it's kind of in flight or being collected. Yeah. Uh, what I was talking about was more like post analysis. So we have Jaeger query, which you can send it a trace ID and get back a trace. Uh, something like that, like where you can Basically, you have an, uh, an interface that allows you to work with spans and traces in a way that's agnostic to the underlying, uh, I guess, installation, so Jaeger or LightStep. So then people can build analysis on top of the tracing data, regardless of which subsystem it is or which, uh, which vendor, that type of thing. So you're talking actually yeah. about like a, a data format, right? Like a export format? Like yeah. Like I mean, we're, we have like, I guess, protocol buffers and uh, soon to have JSON, stuff like that. 
If we aligned on that, then people could write analysis against open tracing instead of Jaeger, for instance. Well, I guess yeah. you're, you're thinking about like the, the use case where people ask like to get a JSON dump or something of the data. And then if there were a standard way to read or to expect what types you're getting back, then people could do more across the board. Yeah, like um, if, if there was a definition of the schema that was in OT for every like language that you might want, like Scala, Java, and mm -hmm. uh, Go, and JavaScript, and Python, and then people could write analysis and aggregations and derivative products against open tracing data instead of against bigger data or, or light step data. Mm -hmm. It also probably help developing tracers because there'd be a standard representation for the data structures that then you could shove into whatever your tracer wanted. Yeah. Uh, so just a, like the kind of idea is uh, collecting all the data is awesome and so far so good. And I think there's like a wealth of value in what we do with data. Uh, so sort of we can maybe put some energy into taking a look at uh, that, that area, that domain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. No, kind of a side thing, but I've been talking to um, was it Simon Simon Stewart on Twitter, who's the web driver Selenium guy, and he's been looking at open tracing um, for observability of Selenium four, which is still sort of early days, but I think there's a lot of interesting stuff there with kind of using open tracing, integrating open tracing into testing frameworks or testing tools like Selenium to not only let you observe, not only let people observe, okay, what's the software doing, but also to think about like, you know, tests and performance um, as tra a traceable and observable event stream, you know, as mm -hmm. traces, right? So there's, there's cool stuff happening outside of just sort of the, you know, context passing RPC, yada, yada, yada world. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, to that note, I saw a talk from the guy who, I guess, started Finagle and maybe started Zipkin, uh, Marius uh, something. He uh, wrote a, like a data processing framework um, and they're using Zipkin format to collect traces and then pump it into uh, X-Ray. And then they're doing a bunch of analysis on that data to determine where they should focus their developments on the framework, like where the, I guess, low hanging fruits are and also high impact efforts are. So it's not really, like it's all based on aggregations. So yeah, that's just another example. I, I can give some color on where this thinking has come up before as well. Um, one place uh, where we'd like to see more standardization, both inside open tracing and like across the industry is not just the data format in terms of like, what are the shape of the protocol buffers, but what we refer to as sort of semantic conventions, but the actual keys and values. And that's, that's more the, the part that people end up seeing in the past have seen as useful. Like it's easy to write a parser for like one format to another, but if all the data is different, that's where it gets really nasty. Uh, if you can't, if you're having to like within each span, maybe there's something called HTTP code or something called HTTP status code or this or that. Um, both having more standards in that field than we currently have in our uh, semantic conventions. And then also having like more structured data in our actual APIs for entering that data into open tracing. Right now you'd sort of have to look these keys up as constants and kind of compose all of these values. But people have asked for things in the past, like, could I just have, like, if I'm going to report on an HTTP request from the client side, can there just be an object with all the fields I should fill out to report on that and, and shove that into open tracing? To sort of make it easier to do the right thing. Yeah. So both, having more standard keys and values and like getting everyone kind of on board with that, whether using open tracing or not. And then in the open tracing API, like pushing those standards more explicitly. Yeah, yeah. we have uh, data structures. We see kind of a lot of variety uh, across types used and across 
across keys used for given data and also across types for the data for a given key. It's kind of yeah, like all sorts of stuff. So yeah, and uh, as an aside, just some more color. The the people who are least interested in this are vendors, it seems, because they're like, well, I already have a tracing format, uh, so this seems like work. And also, it's not like too much trouble for us to just pay an employee to like do some translation from one format to another. Uh, so they don't see it as super important for them. But where people do see this as important and helpful are organizations that have tracing data that they might want to export or give people, but they're not a tracing vendor. So some infrastructure company, you know, Twilio is given as an example of this. Uh, but anyone who has customers who are using them as a service as part of their back end is going to start caring about potentially handing out, you know, the portion of the trace that goes into their system. Uh, so the sort of like standard tracing trace context headers that we're trying to standardize in W3C, this data format thing comes up there in the sense of like people who aren't vendors are, would be more comfortable if there was some standard format. Like if you could just tell them, here, give us, put your data in this format and people are guaranteed to consume it. They might be more inclined to actually go through the efforts of producing that for their customers. If that makes sense. The vendors themselves actually are sort of like, eh, we'll just, we'll just import every format. <laughs> Do we have tickets for these for this issue? Um, I don't think we have a ticket for this in open tracing. I think one part is just sort of a story arc of like, should we, you know, should we add more conventions? And if so, like, what should they be? <coughs> like, should we just start making up our own, or should we be? Are there like other hey, hey, hey. this we could partner with? Yeah, there is a spec. I think there's a ticket in spec for specifically the HTTP API error object thing. Right. Oh. There's some IETF standard that showed up, right? Is that what you're referring to? Yes. Is it IETF? Yeah, yeah. it is IETF. Yeah, you were, you, were on, you were on that. I mean, sure. Well, why not? Right. It's, yeah. I, mean, I guess this one feels like one of those things that's going to be more stuff that goes into the, to the conventions and, you know, you don't have to use it. Well, the API can also export sort of like kind of helper utilities that aren't part of the core API that you can opt into. And yeah, then those, what, yeah. you know, factories for tags and stuff. Well, now they can be like statically typed on like error, you know, is Boolean. And then you can just send that into something that pulls all the tags out of it, that type of thing. Yeah, that was kind of my thought is that it would seems like more of like an extension over here to the side rather than like core API stuff, but mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I, I do think whatever conventions we pick, we we could do more to make it easier for users of open tracing to adopt them. Um, yeah. Well, the simplest, simplest way is to extend a uh, set tag interface to take a, a sort of a factory object and then in the country we can create special factors like http tags thing and then it will have like with status code with url blah 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 and then boom so tracers don't need to change but they can just ask that factory okay explode this to me to like a, a map of tags yep. uh, automatically and we can also have um custom stuff for different frameworks like Express, we could pass it as like a, an Express middleware could generate that and then edit. So that, that would be, I think, pretty extensible and pretty friendly. Yeah, it's basically, we, we have tag types right now, but they're all uh, simple value data structures. And we want to have something, tags that are more like complex structures. That well, potentially. I mean, to your point, we don't necessarily, or if I understood what you're saying, uh, we can maybe change the way tags are set rather than uh, the representation. So is that right? So it's sort of like an object that is a statically typed helper yeah. factory that we, you know, use to generate tags. 
instead of modifying the representation? Oh, well, yes, because we, we like our APIs already export the constants for tags, uh, right? Saying like HTTP status quo, that's like an, a, con a constant in, in every API. So instead of doing constants, let's just create a, an object saying uh, like, uh, this is what you want to set if you're doing HTTP with like typed fields and then pass that object to the tracer and tracer will know how to. And we can have some built-in stuff for the semantic, the condoned semantic conventions, and then people can extend it. Cool. Yeah. That, that, yeah. I think feels that, like sense? that is a thing that has come up kind of repeatedly in other areas. And yeah, I think would be useful. It actually would be better if it's not in the country, but in the actual proper API. Because again, like why define constants instead of just defining a, a, a structure? I think oh. both, right? That way well, you can have both, uh, like, but the constants become implementation details so that, uh, that like, you don't actually encourage people to use contents, constants in this way, right? They can, but you would rather say, just use that struct, uh, yeah. populate it uh, as much as you can, and then we'll do the, 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 the constants ourselves. Yeah, I'm saying like um, if, if we can handle the structs kind of in a general fashion, other people can write the same sort of utility yeah. for a different context. Right, the built-in structs can be for the kind of blessed conventions. Well, the, the, we already have conventions for like messaging, for SQL, for HTTP. Yeah, this right? is API support. Right. right? So, so I'm yeah. saying like, if we handle it in a general way, other people can kind of create API support for other contexts. Yeah, they can. Yeah. So. But it's like, uh, I think, like it's one thing to have custom for specific framework. It's another thing to say, oh, it's like a generic HTTP. I suddenly need to import country for that. That's kind of nasty. Yeah. Right. It's better to have an API directly. I agree. Cool. Uh, does anyone feel like being a champion for this issue? <laughs> I can write up a ticket for it. <laughs> yeah. That's that's a start. Well, in the spec, right? The ticket for yeah. the spec, yeah. In the spec, in the spec repo. Cool. All right, Joe, I'm gonna put you down. Okay. Okay, that, that seems definitely useful. Uh, kind of next step thing. Uh, Getting back to going through, like, what do we think is going well? Uh, I also feel like issue, PR, staleness, responsibility. Uh, I feel like that's that's gotten better with the project. We have more process around things. So the part where, you know, there's like live debate and response responses happening feels better to me. Uh, what doesn't feel great is is the actually like closing out and shipping new releases like there's a a lag between oh we should do this and then debating it and then it, it seems like there's a lag at the last step of like actually getting the apis at the door uh, and sometimes that's a good thing because we want to create room for debate and stuff like that but it also i think it's just we could like tighten it up there uh, yeah, there was an era, you know, a year plus ago when we moved very quickly on stuff like that. And I think that ruffled people's feathers. And now we don't do that. And I think the result is just an unnecessary hit the velocity for the project. I mean, but there, I think it's great to have a, a time for open debate. But once that's over, I think that we've got to just move forward. I mean, this, I think the thing you were always talking about with, uh, you know, a type struct for HTTP calls. I mean, I... I think that's been discussed for years, and no one's ever thought it was a bad idea. It definitely is a little bit of a hassle to get it over the line, but um, but it's not that big of a deal, and we, we should just move move these things forward. We've got to do that. I mean, in terms of the the, I just wanted to go back a minute as well to the um, you know what's happening with the project kind of thing. Like um, oh, oh, sorry. Um, you got time. Oh, cool. Uh, I would. Um, uh, Note that in the beginning of the project, I think when CNCF took open tracing on, it was a very early project for CNCF, and we got a lot of attention. I think the attention open tracing was getting was actually ahead of 
the puck in terms of where the project was. Then there's a period where I think it was about, it was like in parity. And now I think it's actually the other way. I mean, it's like open tracing because it's sort of a standards project and we've intentionally not been making a lot of changes. There's not that much to announce about the core API, which is sort of a feature in a way. Um, but the, I think the experience of velocity that I've heard from folks who are there, for instance, and also in other just sort of mixing with the industry type situations, it's very widely deployed. It's much more widely deployed than I think than is documented, frankly. And, and so there's, a, there's a, now an opposite gap where I think the sort of like uh, perception of open tracing, um, I'm not really sure what it is, but the actual deployment of open tracing is quite broad right now. And I think that uh, um, it's not perceived, it's not, it's not documented. I, think, I don't know how it's perceived, but it's not documented. And I think that's uh, a shift from how things were like a year ago or something like that for the project. I'm not sure if it's good or bad. It's just a, I'm also curious to hear if people hear of a different experience of it. I just am surprised where I see it coming up. Like it's, um, yeah. So we did uh, uh, once on the Jaeger project, we opened a ticket called a survey and we pinged people who we knew were like active on questions, et cetera, to ask, asking them to write some short summaries, like what company you're working for, what's your size, and whether like why you're using Jaeger, what issues you have. Uh, there are some like response to that. Uh, that would be interesting, like if we could do something like that for open tracing and maybe get uh, a bit more data of who is actually using it and. Uh, yeah. Um, and I think this, this pivots into, you know, what I see is sort of the main thing we should be focusing on this fall, which is uh, there, there may be some core API changes uh, that we need, especially around uh, making context propagation more useful. I'm specifically thinking about metrics use case where people have a metric system that's separate from their tracing system and they're trying to dimensionalize their metrics in some way. So when you put a product ID into your tracer, that you know propagates that product ID and then you can you know, make metrics using it which is basically what we kind of do with baggage, but baggage is just, a, it's like a very crude mechanism. So I think we should have some focus API wise on that, but really the rest of it is around just application developers. Part of why I think things are quiet is like the people who need tracing tend to be people working in bigger companies, working on bigger systems, uh, but it's still like hard to adopt for just a variety of reasons. Um, better documentation, uh, announcing things, and you know, uh, just being out there more to like help people, office hours and stuff like that. But then also things like sugary APIs, we've discovered like simpler APIs. Uh, agents, doing more work on agents for languages that support them. Uh, registry, making it easier to find OT integrations, just all the things that lower the barrier for application developers to kind of wrap their heads around this and get started. I feel like we haven't put much effort into that. Um, and so that's the other reason why the project feels a little quiet. Uh, and especially if we don't want to go ripping the API apart every three months, like but still want to have like notable velocity for the project. I think it all needs to be in that area of just building value for users. So they're coming and using open tracing, like regardless of what they think of the API, they're showing up because, you know, the integrations are here, for example. Um, that's the reason we've seen people, for example, bridge their homegrown tracing system to open tracing is because like they're sick of rewriting these instrumentation libraries and they just want to use ours. So I think just focus on making that library ecosystem work really well. Uh, just all the things that make this nice for application developers should be a focus. I know do other people have thoughts on uh, how important that is and also like what like brainstorming what we could do what what they think app devs need to make tracing easier. I have lots of thoughts about this, but I mean, you already know them, but I, the, yeah, I, I think uh, um, I'd like to see 
like an open source effort to automate the configuration of of like modular pieces of instrumentation so that you don't as a developer need to say oh well let me audit all of my dependencies in this particular service and figure out what instrumentation is out there and plug it in it's a little bit different than just a fully fledged agent like a la app dynamics or something um, it's more like a discovery process followed by some kind of automatic binding. And I think like seeing that through to its natural conclusion, you'd end up with a, a sort of meta API for discovery and configuration of uh, tracing instrumentation or something like that, but um, and with some registry mechanisms and so on and so forth. But I, I'd love to see something like that. I, I think that the app dev experience of having to go and discover and, and audit and configure a bunch of tracing modules even if you don't have to write them, it's still kind of a hassle. Uh, and it's very, very much in line with the goals of the project to solve that problem. Yeah, it's definitely a pain point for us. And every other person who's ever done this ever. I mean, it's like the pain point, I think. So yeah, totally, it's super painful. It's hard, to, I mean, there's a lot of reasons that what I just described is actually really difficult with Version, various versions out there. I mean, it's not an easy problem, but. I yeah. mean, one, go on. No, as you say, that's like a layer we kind of try to stay away from. It's because it's so widespread and, and awful. So, sorry. Yeah, no, I mean, I was going to say, like, it's, it's obviously hugely challenging because effectively writing a bunch of static analysis engines for every language that we'll be able to, you know, handle all these different formats of defining dependencies and yada, yada, yada. I do think that having the register, just a simple searchable registry is a good first step and that we can build on that to kind of make suggestions, turn it into some sort of like, hey, this will, here's a tool that scans your, you know, scans your stuff and tells you what you can use. Yeah. Yeah, there's um, a thing that we want to avoid. People who make agents tend to put the whole kitchen sink in the agent. Uh, and we could do a more modular approach where we have all this instrumentation. It's all manual instrumentation. It's all written by the community. Uh, and it's all out there. But uh, can we then just write like standalone tools that do things like the dependency analysis? and uh, matching it up with like uh, just understanding which plugins to install. And then if you have another, so that's just like a standalone discovery phase. And then if you have a standalone phase that's just about automatically wiring things up for the people who need that phase, uh, yeah. then that's like a separate phase. Uh, yeah, and there's certainly, I think there's like tech stacks and there's language languages and frameworks that work better for that part than others. Yeah. I was chatting with someone about like, Oh, it was you Joe about like dumb, dumb node tricks and like agent based node JS instrumentation, which could either be super hacky or like super not hacky, depending on how you do it. Yeah. And depending on what native support there is. Yeah. But then you're and ultimately, you know, you're only hitting a certain amount of things and are you, are you solving like the core problems? Yeah. Um, it'd be really cool. I also think to see just kind of better framework support um, for stuff like C sharp. I know someone's been working on like net core, um, like net core two web framework instrumentation with ASP.net. Um, maybe it'd be worthwhile casting around and seeing if there's desire to have like net four five and above if if more c sharp people are looking to get into the project um or start using open tracing seriously yeah ben is there a ticket for that because i'm kind of i want to learn more about it so hopefully there's some reading material about your uh, thoughts on that oh gosh i don't know um but i can write something I, mean, yeah. uh, I think that it's been discussed in various places, but I, I don't, I'm pretty sure there's not a single place where it's discussed in any depth. That's at least not a ticket. 
but I don't, I'd be happy to do that. I actually think it'd be good. Yeah. Um, we, we do have someone right now working on Java agent like stuff in Java. Um, yeah. right now, just FYI. Uh, so you'll see, uh, some, uh, call for, uh, review of that project uh, probably soon. It has to get a little bit further uh, using the existing Java agent uh, code base as a sort of example code base to work off of. But it ended up, I think, taking a slightly different approach. So just FYI, something coming soon, at least for Java on this front. Yeah. Um, so like, yeah, basically, I think, you know, the APIs are sort of like, I mean, we need to have the APIs. There needs to be an API somewhere. But I really feel like the value of the project to me is the instrumentation. Like, if we can just be the, the best, cleanest, most normalized instrumentation out there, and then also like the best educational resource, giving lots of talks about tracing, having office hours, going to meetups, good documentation, just generally being an educational resource. Like those are the things I think that are really valuable that we can provide as a community. When I think about the value open tracing, the open tracing community can provide to the world, it's, it's focused more there, if that makes sense. And the the API is more just like table stakes. Like there has to be one with certain requirements and there wasn't one, so we made one. But it's less about that and more about like actually instrumenting all the software. I would, uh, I may be biased, but I would add like a third uh, opportunity, which is the post analysis uh, phase that I was talking about. Yeah. Those first two, like the instrumentation, especially um, that's really focused on collecting information. But then making it actionable uh, is, I think, like a like a kind of a wealth of possibility. Yeah, I mean, more specialized analysis tools. Basically, it's like if you've got enough of this system standardized, you don't have to go out there and rewrite all of this stuff just to come up with a new way to analyze the data. Exactly. Like if we like if if Jaeger Query and and Lightstep and whatever whatever other systems would want to kind of align on this, if we had endpoints that expose traces in a standardized structure, then there could only you know you we would only need like one in implementation of transforming it to like a service dependency graph, or one implementation of or implementation of doing differentials, etc. Yeah. Uh, then it could just work across systems and actually could potentially consume across installations. Um, I would love to talk to you uh, more about this. Um, I can get oh, you up to speed with, yeah, there's been some of this work done through W3C. I'll, I'll kind of point you at that. Maybe we can have a one-on-one. -on -one. That'd be great. I'll, uh, I'll create a ticket for the high level kind of intention and then uh, maybe we can connect. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and I'll mention, yeah, it's not just uh, um, open tracing. There's other people who, other groups who are not directly involved with open tracing for whatever reason, but are also interested in this. So, but yeah, we can, we can see what the scope is. Awesome. That's great. Uh, yeah. So open census, haha. -ha. This is up here on the list. I think this is also something important. The confusion between open tracing and open census has gotten to the point where it's just nasty. <laughs> and has to be has to be dealt with, I think, for a variety of reasons. Um, and uh, uh, just uh, so people are aware, there is uh, a sort of summit kind of discussion meeting uh, being planned. Uh, I don't think like everyone in the universe can show up for this meeting, but there is at least going to be some high level people from Open Census and the Open Tracing projects. Uh, and the CNCF and various ecosystem players sitting down to figure out how these projects can collaborate better with each other. Um, because we, a lot of the individuals, we all collaborate just in general on various tracing things. And then there's like all this friction around these two projects. Uh, so I'm curious to hear what people, 
uh, I guess I'm curious about two things. One, what do people find painful or confusing right now? And two, um, what do, what is the world people wish to see <laughs> in relation to these two projects? Like if we could collaborate more, like what do people have concrete visions of what they wish that looked like? Well, given the audience of this call, I think this is not a particularly <laughs> fruitful discussion. Uh, it's interesting to me, at least going in there, if I'm talking to people from census, I want to understand what their goals are, but it would be helpful to me to understand what, what the goals are for people who are involved in the open tracing side. I don't want to be like, we passionately care about X, and it turns out like no one cares about X. It was just me. <laughs> So, oh, I I mean, uh, uh, well, what I would like to see is uh, if uh, all the instrumentation that already exists for open tracing, uh, it could be used with sensors as a, as a sort of the uh, instrument implementation of the tracer, right? Uh, and that requires effectively a common API between the two projects. Even if that API like, needs to change from what open tracing is today, that change is probably not going to be super significant and uh, the instrumentation themselves would be easy to adopt uh, but if we if we could like yeah if the if open tracing would uh, would become the api um, for that then it would be the outcome that i hope for so you're saying open census should adopt the open tracing api we can agree on a new api where basically change it but i think one of the things like open census currently bundles api with instrumentation and don't have a strict governance and how that e API even evolves, right? Like open tracing has way more governance and uh, community review uh, of the API than open census is. So I think I'm sure these are things that are changing. Uh, I know they seem to want more. I mean, I don't want to speak for the census people, they can speak for themselves, but th they seem like they're sort of trending in the direction of trying to open the project up. Uh, it's also kind of why this seems like a good opportunity to be talking to them. So you're trying to bring Microsoft and other people in. So it's not just an internal Google project. You're just staffing. So, so we, we started that document about open tracing goals to share ahead of that meeting. We can share it here, but I think we should, I would prefer to just send it out to, to that uh, audience that is yeah. supposed to meet. Uh, so if, if anyone else needs to review that, please do that and let's send it. Yeah, I, I would love to review that with you early next week, Yuri, before sending it out. I'm about to go to the woods. Uh, I, have I, I mean, I've looked at, I, I, would, I think it's very safe. Like, there's nothing in that that I think is very controversial. I'd rather just put it out there. I, like, I, I mean, I must, I, I mean, you could take like literally a 30 second look, Ted, if you haven't looked at it, but it's pretty benign. It's... Okay. I'll post it in the meeting notes. Pretty That's uncontroversial, yeah. I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to like speak for the group, but just, uh, just to make sure my, my personal opinion is known. Like, I feel very strongly that the two projects are damaging each other and the industry right now in their current state. Like, I, that part I'm positive about, and I think that the, uh, the greater good for sure, and actually open tracing as well, would be served by seeing, like. Um, I'd like it to be like firmly documented that we actually would like there to be like one API that is pretty decoupled from the implementation of a tracer or a tracing system. Um, and that we're not like adamant about what that API is called as long as it's not just code wise, but from a kind of like product standpoint is positioned as a separate entity. I think that's really important. And it's my only really significant technical concern with census is that they haven't done that. I think they really need to do that. Um, if they did, I, I would be happy to see that no open tracing move closer or become the same thing. Uh, that's the thing that I feel personally feel really strongly about. Um, and I can make lots of in the weeks technical arguments for why that's important going forward. But um, but I, I really would like to have as much of the goal stuff documented way ahead of the meeting, like, which is why I want to send that out. And I want them to feel some pressure to send stuff out too. Because the worst thing that could happen is that we go to the meeting and spend like, a lot of time discovering things that are static, like goals, for instance. Like that stuff should just be out in front way, way in advance. And hopefully we can get in there and already have like 
the main things you really need to debate outlined before the meeting. Uh, and, and I see like the next week as an opportunity to dig out those topics. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I totally agree that we should have all our ducks in a row before going into that meeting. Um, and for what it's worth, I think it's very helpful to focus on uh, goals, uh, not implementation details, because I think that is just, we will just end up in the weeds and bike shedding. I noticed we just, because we're nerds, it's like red meat. If we start talking around API specifics or things like that, it's just, that'll just derail the conversation. Yeah, um, so one, one thing that might uh, not be implementation specific, but still uh, go into like a, uh, almost a contentious discussion is that, even when we talk about goals, uh, I when I met with um, like Bogdan last time, we had this uh, sort of overall amicable discussion, but it got heated at some point because, uh, for example, one goal of open tracing was like we don't standardize on the data formats, right? Uh, and then uh, they're saying, okay, well, but if you don't, then you effectively promote in vendor lock-in because. Uh, because we you don't provide any data format and so as soon as you pick a vendor in one service you have to pick the exact same vendor in the other service effectively right um, and so which is uh, it's a, it's a valid argument it's just not an argument against the goal of, of having an API uh, yes. right but but that discussion will happen and so I wonder if we should maybe in addition to goals and non goal sections uh, uh, have something like in that regard but it, it starts to get in, into the like, argumentative territory. Yeah. Uh, but I just don't want to spend another half hour like debating that point uh, where it's like, okay, yeah, so yeah. if you pick different implementations, of course you're going to have a problem, uh, it, but it's not an API problem per se. The API doesn't create that problem. It right. just doesn't solve it. And I, I think that's, uh, I think you've hit the nail on the head is part of where a, a lot of this friction comes from is the you know many people feeling the elephant where all of these things holistically are important when you go to build a coherent tracing system uh that's going to have interoperability between multiple services potentially even multiple tracing systems yada yada you need you need all of these pieces right like you need a wire protocol uh you need some kind of data format you need uh, analysis systems, you need uh, APIs, uh, like you need all of these pieces. And because open tracing has tried to say like, well, that's like too much. We're just gonna focus on the API problem. That leads these conversations into the realm where we say, uh, we're not focusing on that, or it sounds like we're saying that's not important, but to other people, they think that is really important. And so it sounds like we're disagreeing. But usually what we're not saying is that we're disagreeing on the importance. It's just that we chose that to be out of bounds for just the piece of the puzzle we felt like we wanted to work on. Like we just wanted to work on uh, the instrumentation ecosystem in code, basically, and making sure software actually is producing this information. And so the thing we cared about was the API and we were trying to keep that separate from these other problems. It's not that these other problems aren't important though. Um, and so, there is something to be said about having one organization that is like the kitchen sink. Maybe it's well factored, but there's still at least like, if we're talking about like, I don't even know, I don't want to call it open tracing or open <laughs> or something. I just, I want to make up a new term. Um, but we're talking about just like distributed based, standard issue distributed tracing is like all of these pieces. Like, so mm -hmm. like one bigger project that's well factored, I think would be better than having a bunch of little projects each trying to focus on one part of it. That confuses the hell out of users. <laughs> like they've got to come to open tracing the API and then go to Jaeger to get the, um, implementation and then like the w3c to get the wire protocol like it just and then the itf for a data format like it just that's like really confusing to people i've noticed so i i'm just gonna insert my slide from velocity uh it's partly your slide 
uh, that, but with some yeah. annotations. Uh, I think this kind of clarifies. I mean, you know, sounds like open yes. trace made the decision to focus on client instrumentations. But now, as Ben was saying earlier, it's in a stable, mature state. It could potentially grow beyond that. Yeah, but we're discussing specifically yeah. the like contention between open tracing and census, right? Because like, right. if if census continues to get in steam with a different API, then everything that open tracing have done becomes useless, right? If like people instead start, and then people now have to decide, oh, if I'm a uh, like instrument in my stuff, should I use open tracing or open census? Yeah. It's a super hard decision. Like how do you have to bet on one technology to win effectively? Right. So yeah, open reason? census is like A, B, C and open tracing is like A. And so there's some contention about like open, open tracing, not prioritizing or valuing B and C. And I'm saying like, if we want to align, maybe we can sort of make a paradigm shift and make it known that, you know, B and C are important and imperative that we align on A, B and C, not just A. Yeah, but I don't want to actually extend the scope of open tracing project because we already have like a lot of work and not enough resources to even do like all the instrumentation and PRs, etc. So adding B and C is just like why? If it says open census could do a perfectly good job there, right? Yeah, the, the way I've thought of it myself is, is sort of along these lines is that there's um, a set of problems that involve the instrumentation of software and it's it's a really significant chunky set of problems. And then there's a separate set of problems that involve everything downstream from that. And th that actually can be sub subdivided into many different projects potentially. And uh, the um, Ted's point is well taken that if people just want to get shit done, like the idea that they have to research, first of all, have to understand and comprehend and then separately make decisions about each one of these slots is sort of overwhelming, I think, for people. So I've recognized that. I think from a long-term maintenance standpoint, um, making sure that regardless of marketing and how things are, what things are named, making sure that there is some clean separation between those two things is yeah. like, is vitally important. I, I, that's the thing I'm trying to say more than anything. And that's, that actually goes beyond whether or not to merge projects or not. It's, it's more of like, I mean, if you don't merge the projects and open tracing continues to exist, then there's automatically some separation there. But, um, but I think from an engineering standpoint, that separation is the thing that I'm really arguing for. And I think the trouble is you have a project that does A, B, and C, it's much easier to kind of cheat about the boundary between A and B and poke holes in the API for the con for convenience and, uh, and for like short-term trade-offs basically that assume certain details of B in the design of A. And actually, I mean, I, I generally think open census is pretty high quality software, but they've done that in a number of places. And I do think it limits the, re, the, the reusability of, of APIs when you, when you make those decisions. So to me, like the trouble with, with expanding open tracing scope is that there'd be a similar temptation I, uh, to, to make assumptions about, oh, well, of course you're going to be using something like Jaeger downstream when in fact there are many different ways you can use this instrumentation that uh, pair tends to earlier points about context propagation have literally nothing to do with latency analysis. Um, and we need to make sure that those things aren't, we don't box those out. Um, I, I think the industry will be better if, if we don't. So that, that's been my argument for separating the thing all along. It's just the, the portability, not just across analytical, like latency and la latency analysis systems, so portability across completely different applications of this instrumentation. That's the thing that I'm really adamant about. So you're saying stick to A, B and C is a separate problem. There's but also kind of A prime, or like there's all this stuff, like the agent stuff we're talking about, all this, you know, standardization of semantics. Uh, all, there's a lot of stuff, like A itself, we really just built the firmament of it. We haven't done any of the higher level primitives that really make this like a nice UI for a programmer. I don't mean a point and click UI, but like a programming UI or D, what's the DX, is that the new newfangled way? Developer experience of using APIs is quite limited. Oh, by your way. Um, anyway, I mean, I think that's what we should be focusing on, but it seems like it has to go. Yeah, I think interesting. Getting kicked I don't know, I think there's a lot of value in B and C and um, because yeah. the implementation is decoupled, it, it kind of gives us like, a, a, like an advantage in, in terms of warding off the pitfalls you mentioned. Yeah, but, um, fair enough. A has a lot more depth and, and potential change, but um, I don't know. The, I guess the downside is not putting any attention on B and C means we're also not influencing it. Yeah. Well, we kind of are. It's just 
I mean, and that's that's what's weird about this is there's like discussion about how, and uh, we should wrap up in a minute just to be fair to everyone. There is discussion about, oh, you know, we don't, we can't handle like the breadth of working on all of these things. But the thing I noticed is it's like when I go to like the W3C distributed tracing meeting and we bike shed about what the wire protocol should be for hours. It's like more or less the same people, you know, like, so it, it's like, even in terms of like the staffing of these efforts, they're not like that different. And you never know if like, if we decide on the mission, the people may come, but I have to go. Uh, okay. Pleasure chatting with you guys. Right. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Catch up early in the week. Yeah. Pleasure. All righty. Um, I, I will end with a, a, a final shill. Uh, for the people who are left on the call and maybe are not aware of the open trace, uh, sorry, not open tracing, but the Observability Practitioners Summit. Uh, this is a single day talk. We're calling it OPS for short. Uh, that it'll be a single day talk, single track conference uh, in front of KubeCon. Uh, I can't announce the speakers yet because we're still finalizing that, but I am very excited about all the possible speakers. So it's going to be a pretty rad conference. So if you can come to KubeCon in December, you should definitely consider coming a day early uh, and going to this conference. Uh, and the registration link is in the uh, meeting notes for today. So check that out. Let me totally crass and paste it into the uh, chat window as well. That's my, my moment of shilling. Not too bad. I have to go, Ted. Thanks, right. everyone. Lovely. Love you seeing y'all. Hi, y'all.